Welcome to The Watch Woman on the Tower. This is basically going to be a reading of an essay that I wrote for the LDS Women's Project. Now, obviously that means that it's going to be centered on women. This is a story about a woman, but that doesn't mean that this can't also apply to men. You probably already know that women often represent the bride of Christ and the church, so there are many ways to apply the story, and this is just how I've done it here for those who might not really want to take the time to go and, and read an essay, although I will post a link below for those who are interested or would like to share that version. So let's begin. There is a Bible story you won't be learning about this year as part of Come Follow Me and Sunday School. It's the story of the woman of Thebes found in the ninth chapter of Judges. I see this oversight as a tragedy. This single chapter of the Old Testament contains incredible imagery relating to prophecies in the Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Price, Isaiah, and the New Testament. And in my estimation, it's a profound commentary on the power of priesthood women have and will have, particularly in the end times. So let's dig in. First off, we have Abimelech, a man who would claim authority to rule Israel through his mother. Although the great judge and military leader Gideon was Abimelech's father, what ultimately matters when it comes to priesthood descent in Israel is the mother. For instance, Ishmael may have been Abraham's son, but he was not Sarah's son, and so did not have the authority to claim the promises of the Abrahamic covenant. Likewise, Abimelech was the son of Gideon's concubine and so had no claim to any authority. And yet somehow he convinced the people with a system of judges similar to that in the Book of Mormon to make him a king. The usurper Abimelech killed all 70 of his brothers, except one, Jotham. This last survivor delivers a prophecy to his people in the form of a parable about trees. Does this sound familiar? Jacob 5, Olive Tree Allegory. In this parable, all the trees ask an olive tree to be their ruler. But the olive tree has a greater work to do, blessing the people with its oil. Likewise, the fig tree and the grapevine refuse the honors of men offered them because their purpose is to nourish the people with food and wine. Are you listening with your spiritual ears? Food, wine, and olive oil. Finally, the people turn to a thorn bush and ask him to be their king. This bramble ironically offers to provide shade for the trees, along with a threat to light himself on fire and burn all the cedars of Lebanon if they do not accept him. Let's pause for a minute here and recap. A usurper king takes over what is essentially a democracy by claiming authority through his heritage. Someone else we know did something similar. In Moses 1.19, Satan cried with a loud voice and ranted upon the earth and commanded, saying, I am the only begotten, worship me. But begotten of whom? Born of whom? Also, in Isaiah 10, we are told that the end-time Antichrist, codenamed Assyria, rod of my anger, will destroy the forests and cedars of Lebanon as he conquers the world. Now, in case you weren't aware, throughout the scriptures, trees are symbols used to represent people. One prime example that relates to our story in Judges is that of Nephi's vision of the tree of life. Nephi is shown a vision of a tree bearing fruit. Next, he's shown a vision of a mother bearing fruit. The tree of life in this vision represents Mary. If you want to learn more about that, look at Daniel C. Peterson's Nephi and his Asherah. You can find that online as part of the Neil A. Maxwell Institute at BYU. So why is this important? Well, because the trees in Jotham's parable are also all bearing fruit. They are female. And who is it in Judges 9 that destroys this end-time antichrist type? A woman, and not just any woman, a woman on a watchtower. Just to quickly sum up the rest of the story, King Abimelech is putting down rebellions in his region by, you guessed it, rounding up the trees, uh, I mean people, 
and setting them on fire. Some of the people even flee to a temple and are burned alive. But the people of Thebes gather in a strong tower. From its height, a woman sees the plot of Abimelech to destroy her people, and from her great height, she drops an upper millstone on his head. Okay, spiritual ears listening time again. A woman from a higher place crushes the head of the usurper. Now, what was Eve, who, by the way, was created in a higher, more heavenly place, i.e. the Garden of Eden, promised after she partook of the fruit of the tree of knowledge? She was told she and her posterity would have the power to crush Satan's head. Are you as excited about this as I am? Who is it that is the stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to the wicked, but a stone of help to the righteous? Jesus Christ. He who is the first fruits of the tree of life, the tree that is the mother. Want to know something else cool? <laughs> the stone of help mentioned in 1 Samuel 7.12 is called an Eben Ezer. Do you know what Eve is called in the Garden of Eden? Adam's Azer, and help to meet his needs. So essentially, just as Christ is our stone of help, so two women represent Christ as an Azer, the help that is sent to this world to meet its needs with the stone, Jesus Christ. So what does this mean for you and me as women of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or elsewhere? Well, first of all, it's important to understand that the image of a watch person on a tower is used specifically in the Church of Jesus Christ to denote prophets. And a watchman in our day, the prophet, President Russell M. Nelson, has said, the women of this dispensation are distinct from the women of any other because this dispensation is distinct from any other. This distinction brings both privileges and responsibilities. Then he has a footnote in which he comments that our time will merge with the second coming of the Lord. He goes on to say that the kingdom of God cannot be complete without, quote, women who can speak with the power and authority of God. But in 2018, President Nelson also said, I fear that too many of our brothers and sisters do not grasp the privileges that could be theirs. He was speaking of priesthood privileges. What are these priesthood privileges the prophet desires the women of the church to claim? They are the spiritual treasures he spoke to us about in his talk of the same title in 2019. And while I've already delved into that in previous videos like Words of a Prophet and Come to Zion, let me just say that if you haven't already, I really encourage you to study the footnotes in President Nelson's talk, Ministering with Power and Authority, as well as the footnotes in Spiritual Treasures, to know what spiritual treasures the prophet desires us to seek. But just a little spoiler alert here, he references people like Enoch and Melchizedek, who walked and talked with God and had incredible spiritual gifts. Is it any wonder President Nelson went on to make the bold claim in 2020 that women in our day have the spiritual power to change the world? If we have women who personally know the Savior, the way other prophets like Alma and Nephi and Enoch personally knew him, if we had women who could draw on the power of their covenants and manifest the kind of godly power on this earth that in the past was used to prophesy, move mountains, defeat armies, and most importantly, help to bring others back into the presence of God. Could this crush Satan's head and change the world? Oh yes, it could. Can you see now why I lament our Come Follow Me manual skipping from Judges 8 directly over to chapter 13. What a travesty to miss this incredible type and shadow of our day. Right after, by the way, another story of two women crushing a military leader's head, namely Deborah and Jael. There's a pattern going on here out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, right? But 
this doesn't mean that you can't open your mouth as President Nelson encouraged us to and share these things with others. I would recommend you gain an understanding and testimony of them first, though, by the Holy Ghost, um, if you haven't already. And a good place to start would be with Isaiah, with the Isaiah Institute website or the Isaiah Explain website. Um, They have these apps now and podcasts where you can just listen to commentaries. And I know this sounds like a commercial for um, Isaiah Institute. Uh, It's not really so much a commercial for that as for Isaiah himself. There's a reason why God said, great are the words of Isaiah and told us multiple times throughout the Book of Mormon in particular to read the words of Isaiah. There's a reason why Isaiah is the most quoted Old Testament prophet in the New Testament. And just as relates to this topic, there is so much feminine imagery in relation to end time prophecy in Isaiah. Zion is a woman. We are the daughter of Zion, not a son the daughter. Think about that. Zion herself is a land flowing with what? Milk and honey. Milk that can only come from females. Honey that is only produced by female bees under the authority and lineage of a queen. I mean, can it be any more clear that women play an astoundingly important part in the establishment of Zion in these latter days? And President Eyring said as much that we would be the women or it would be us or our daughters or our granddaughters that would literally be the ones to build up zion in our day and now that you know about the whole tree symbolism thing especially as it relates to women maybe you'll be better equipped to pursue the exciting journey of exploring all the other hidden treasures the old testament has to offer you throughout the rest of this year in come follow me but one final thought if you are concerned i might be I don't know, encouraging the women of this church to get a little too big for their britches. Remember what Moses, another watchman on the tower, said? Would God that all Jehovah's people were prophets and that Jehovah would put his spirit upon them. So here we have an example of a watchman on a tower wishing there could be others up there with him standing beside him is our current watchman on the tower hoping for the same. And who will it be? Will it be women? Will it be you?